Hello. I like recently, just a, like 48 hours ago, landed a gig for 12 product shots, and one of them's going to a big company. I'm not going to tell you what company that is, but I'm excited. Yay. Thankfully, I'm so busy, I don't have to start till next week. But the question that everybody keeps asking me is, uh, how do you do or get product photography gigs? Let's first start off by stating what should be the obvious. Now, product photography is not about you expressing the je ne sais quoi, well, this is my photographic style, bro. You know, you've got your own style and everybody has their own style. Product photography is where you're being paid to do what the hell the client wants. That's not to say you actually can't stick a little bit of your flair or, uh, you know, your style into the shot. But since the client, especially in product photos, you know, where you're having to do elaborate setups, yeah, I uh, draw up concept compositions and talk about lighting with the client. And this is not step one, of course. People say, well, how do you get these uh, gigs with the client? Um, actually, once you uh, uh, have a couple uh, clients out there, the word of mouth, will spread so fast that you'll actually end up with more work than you can handle but check out a company's website um, you can cold call in a company like you're uh, cruising around and you, you love their products when you actually express interest in a product if you if you go into a store or a, a company and uh, you talk with them and they can like a sixth sense like an animal can smell fear they can tell that you don't give a you know, a flying foo about their products and what it is they do, and as such, they won't hire you. When you actually express interest, deep interest, in what they do and the product they make, it makes, and this is how I actually got, uh, uh, get my clients, and also to land clients the easiest, is that I am deeply interested in what they produce, and I probably buy and use it. When you express interest, they, that really draws them into you like a magnet. So it's always good to express. If you feel like you're an aloof person that doesn't care about what they do, they're never going to hire. You can be the best photographer, product photographer on earth. You actually have to express interest and tell them what it is you know, that they're doing wrong or their photography. Check out their website. 99 times out of 100, um, uh, a company, whether they be manufacturer or retail, uh, their product photos are horrific. They're not only low res, they're poorly done. It's like, I could do a lot better than that. Give them some examples of your work. Um, um, I try to tell them that they need quality work for their products, and you tell them, too, the psychology behind that. You know, you can actually, and I, I say this to every client on a product shoot, you could take a picture of the cutest doll, yeah, this is not about Chucky or that, uh, what's that other uh, recent uh, horror doll? I forget what it is. You can take a picture of the most beautiful doll and you can make it look light and fluffy or you can actually make it look like something out of a horror flick. Simply, not by changing, you know, the camera or the aperture, just by changing the lighting. So you actually have to know, and this is all part of, uh, some people call it the mood board. I actually uh, call it uh, concept composition about how they want the shot arranged and also too how they want the shot lit and how you light the shot of course uh, tells uh, a lot about what you're trying to convey about the product so you're working with the client you're not saying you know I'm gonna do this shot it's like oh my god your work is really competent that's wonderful but if you are gonna do your thing that is not what clients want in product photography you have to have a conversation communication is so incredibly important that you discuss the concept, yes? And my biggest uh, uh, photography fan, and he's dead now, cancer, was Dean Collins. I mean, he, he was famous, but he didn't say, I'm gonna do my thing, you know, I'm a world-renowned photographer, which he was, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna hit it up. No, he never did that with any of his clients. It's like, well, this guy's famous, and how great is photography? Who cares? Product photography clients don't want that. It's like, well, great, the photo looks great, but this is not what we want. You know, we're paying you to do, to do what we want. We want our shot to look like this. So could, a lot of uh, product photography clients, depending on what it is, like I do medical products, which I've done more than a few in the past, 
depends on what it is. They want it to be cold and clinical because that is what they represent. That might be the nature of their product. They want it to look cool and sexy. That's what you're going to do. You're there to do what the client wants. And if you don't actually express that very, very soon into the discussion of doing the product, you're not going to get the jobs. Like, well, my work is so great. It's like, why didn't you hire me? Not that you would ask that question. They're paying you to do what the heck they want. It blows my mind that people do that. It's like, well, you're not out doing street photography or expressing yourself and who you are as a unique photographer, which is great. Do that on your own time, but when you're being paid, you're there to do a professional job of what the client wants. And they may not know what they want. And that's where you actually have the discussion with them on the composition of the shot. I do it, call it co a concept composition, how it's to be arranged, the symmetry, what's to be included, what's not to be included, and the lighting. Um, here's another really important thing, and I've not heard anybody ever discuss this in any video. Act like, and this is really important, and you should express yourself, you act like you don't need or want their business. If you, if they smell desperation on you, it's like, well, this guy's desperate, you know, we're not going to give him the job. Every product job that I've got, they've actually reached out to me or they demanded, you know, we want you to do that. We saw what you did, and that's how I got these recent 12 products. We saw that shot that you did. This is what we want. This, this is great. You know, can you do this for It's like, yes, and of course you drop a contract. You need to establish what your percentages, of, uh, percentages are of uh, CODB, cost over doing business, which includes travel, your post-processing time. On and on and on. I can't actually tell you what you de what your determinations are for your percentage over CODB, cost of doing business. You need to do those calculations yourself, what you feel like you're worth over the cost of your actual time. <clears throat> in other words, you put in XYZ amount of time, which equals money. What percentage above that, including fuel, post-processing, setup time, lighting, lighting use, lighting and gear, wear and tear. What's the percentage above that that you're going to charge, which is, of course, your pure profit or PP? I can't tell you what that percentage is. Some people do 30, 40 percent. Some people do 100 percent. Some people do 200 percent. Depends on how good they are, how great a work that they are, are known for doing. I can't tell you what your personal percentage is. Everybody keeps asking that question. And that's subjective on what it is you know you can and can't do relative to how great or how wonderful you make the client feel. You know, you fulfill their vision. But you actually have to have that discussion with them. And they have to discuss the lighting. You have to discuss the composition. You're not there to express yourself. You are kind of, sort of. You're there to express your skills in creating the vision that they want or you and the client wants in constructing this concept of the perfect product shot. High resolution, perfectly done. Professionalism. Communication is important. You're not going to tell the client, I'm going to do it and, you know, give you the shots. And 99% of clients don't want that. And they're not going to hire you and they're not going to recommend you if you do that. Product photography is not like other photography. It's just not. And let some other product photographers chime in and they'll say, yep, yep, you know, I don't like that fat tattooed guy, but he's right on this. He's dead right. So let's leave it there because I am right on that. But anyway, you never act like you want their business. You never ask them for their business. You tell them, it's like, you know, your website, you know, this is not right. Is this really what you want your product to be represented as? You know, you almost have to be slightly smug. You have to be brutally honest. Well, yeah, it's wrong. You know, what do you think we should do? It's like, well, what's your vision and idea of your, well, it's like this. Can you think, yeah, of course I could do it. And uh, you don't proposition them for work. I mean, you let them make the conclusion themselves. You know, you lead them down the path of uh, inevitability and like, you know, this guy's right. You know, our images are horrible. We're a professional company. We got horrible images. Today also, too, one of the big things in product photography, now that basically, you know, every goober has high-speed internet. We don't need these low-resolution shots, especially in these times where nobody is shopping in person and tactily feeling the product anymore. This is where medium format is so frigging important. Why is it so important? Because they want to see the client. Everybody has high-speed internet now, essentially. They want to see high-resolution shots of something that they don't want to travel to the city for 500 miles. Like, well, there's not one for 500 miles. You know. They want to see high-resolution shots. I tell that 
to retail. So, you know, it's like your product is great and everything, but you got this low res. Everybody has high speed internet. You, you don't need that low res garbage on there. You know, I understand that, uh, you know, people bring it up on their iPhone or their iPad. They don't want it to load forever. But, you know, that's part of web design that it will be determined what the actual uh, speed that you're actually buffering the image at that will automatically default and that's of course part of HTML coding which I'm not a coder and I don't pretend to be even though I built a lot of websites that a low resolution will image will pop up but I mean 99.9% .9 of the rest of us with high res I mean with uh, with the high speed internet connections we want a high res wow I didn't know that that's that looks great I want to order one of those you tell the clients about that oh you know you're right I never thought about that um, um, point number three, and this is getting back to what I said just like 15 minutes ago. You never tell them you're going to do your thing. You're there to do their thing. People that try to break into a product photography that think that they're going to express themselves, well, you can't express yourself, you know, in many little nuanced aspects of the product, but you're not there to do that. Product photography is demanding and requires you have the skills to set up the lighting correct and to manifest the vision that you and the client have agreed. It was like, well, what do you want? Do you want uh, the image uh, to pop? Do you want some contrast to shadows? And of course, um, you know, once you agreed upon that, it's your job to manifest that. That's the agreement with you. It's a lot of times the client don't know what they want. It's like, well, your product is this kind of product. And, you know, if I were you, then I would want my product to <clears throat> have this sort of lighting because it's that kind of product. You know, you don't make like, say the company was a toy company. You don't want their fluffy little dolls to look like something out of a horror flick, would you? You want them to look airy and fluffy. So I'm going to use a ring light on this and, you know, tweak it some in uh, post-processing on the Photoshop and Lightroom or Capture One and make it look even more fluffy because this is designed to appeal to a little child or something. For example, um, draw up the concept composition, what I like to call it. Uh, some people call them mood boards. Talk about the lighting, make an agreement. Um, uh, once again, ask them their wants for the lighting or the mood, whether it be clinical or flat. Um, uh, never, ever, 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 ever print the stuff yourself. Don't care what kind of equipment you got, never do it. Don't get into framing and don't get into printing. Have your client or set up through your client the printing. You show them exactly what it costs and you're, you know, you could charge a, uh, you know, a, uh, an assist fee for contacting and forwarding the images because that takes time and time is money but you don't get into that it will just wreck your life and you should never ever ever print or be responsible for the prints the client and the printing company is who you recommend you could charge a, uh, charge a surcharge to the client for that but if you get into that you're just wasting your time you're not going to make any money you're, you're going to lose money um, I like to give them uh, low res or relatively low res watermarked uh, proofs of uh, five different edits for each product shot. And you never want to give the client too much, but five depends on also too what they're paying. Once you've agreed upon the lighting and the composition, give them five uh, medium resolution uh, watermarked uh, proofs, also with a big line through it. A big line through it with not only a proof mark, but a big line through it of uh, different edits of the final shot so they can make their choice. Um, and lastly, like I said, determine your CODB. This is part of the contract that you draw up for starting anything. Um, but I actually do that after uh, discussing uh, the lighting and the composition and how much time is going to be spent on it because if it's a complex shot. But uh, determine your CODB. That's uh, subjective. I uh, always charge 30% up front and 70% uh, uh, on delivery of the final shot. Um, if the client uh, want, and I'll recommend too, it saves me time. I don't have, to, I don't want to have to deal with printing. If I can get out of printing, I'll recommend uh, where they order and send the high resolution shots to. 
And then it's between the client and, uh, and, you know, that's if they want prints. You know, to line the hallways or their factory or their manufacturing or their retail. Um, that's wonderful. You never deal with printing and never deal with framing. You know, unless you're a masochist, and then you should do it. Um, really, those are the only fundamental things of product photography that I can recommend. Uh, once you get a few jobs, everything else is just downhill. The word of mouth will spread. So it's like, oh, look at this. Oh my God, we need something like that. I mean, our work is horrible. Low resolution web shots. Um, corporate photography is a type of product photography and, and, and it's for businesses uh, to shoot their exterior and interior, also to shoot uh, their... Uh, they're uh, workers, you know, they get the, and it's a tax write-off for them, you know. Corporate and uh, product photography is awesome. It's the least amount of stress and the highest amount of uh, payout. And there is so much work out there for product and corporate photography. It blows my mind that all these less than intelligent people on YouTube talking about wedding photography. And, uh, and let's just be honest, okay? Let's be brutally honest. You know, while it's uh, hot and, you know, oh man, that's awesome, look at that. These YouTubers taking pictures of these, uh, you know, hot chicks, you know, like pose, like, pose for me like that, baby. Yeah, there we go. There's no money in that. Those women don't pay. There's no money in that. You know, there is what you want to do as a photographer, and there is what you do to make ends meet and pay the bills. If you want to pay bills, you're, you're going to starve to death taking pictures of hot people. Because there's a lot of really good, skilled photographers out that are doing that for free. I don't know if you know this or not, but the internet is flooded. Absolutely flooded. With the hottest people on earth, and the images are for free. There is no money in that. If you like do it, like if you're a rich person and that's what you want to do for fun, I get it. But if you're planning on doing that, making money, and all these YouTubers, that's all they do is like they'll take a picture of some hot chick. You know, here we are today with uh, Nikita, and Nikita is wearing a nice Lycra spandex uh, bodysuit, and we're gonna go out to the the uh, the Bushman of the column, uh, Cal uh, what what is it, the Bushman of the, <laughs> you know. We're going to drive a thousand miles out into the African wilderness and we're going to shoot Nikita in her Speedo swimsuit. It's like, wow, man, what a great shot. There's no money in that. <laughs> That's what all these YouTubers are doing. <laughs> That's, you know, it makes for glamour. It's like, whoa, man, that's what I want to do. Oh, you want to do that, huh? Oh, you don't want to get paid as a photographer. You want to take pictures of hot people. <laughs> okay. You don't ever want to make any money at it, apparently. Yeah, good luck with that. Are you rich? Are you rich? Because that's what a rich person would do. They're not worried about the money. I'm going to take pictures of hot people. Well, good if you're rich. If you're 99.99% of everybody else and you're trying to get paid to do it, you're never going to make money doing that. Do whatever you like. I told you the truth. And uh, what I find fascinating is that I don't know of another YouTube channel that's telling you these facts. Because they are undeniable. Just look in the comments section below. Like the last video that I made 48 hours ago about product photography, there are some serious product I like, oh, mean, Ken's right. Is exactly right. I am right. Even if you hate me, I'm right. Goodbye. <laughs>